Hey everybody and welcome back. This is How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates and we are now on part two talking about confidence intervals, sampling distributions, margins of errors, and sample sizes. We just finished talking about this example of finding the 95% confidence interval about a population proportion. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next example. In the next example, we're gonna look at something called sampling distributions. Sampling distributions can be a little confusing at first because they have many steps and stages. This example that we're gonna do is actually very, very small because sampling distributions can get pretty huge and we wouldn't be able to list everything out in an example form. So in this example, we have a population of only three values. And that's very unusual because often populations are enormous, like billions of people or whatnot. But sometimes populations can be very small. For example, as another example beside this one, let's say you just held a small conference and you invited just 20 people to that conference. The population of that conference is those 20 people. So depending on how you define your population, that's how you know how large it is, and then of course what kind of samples you want to take from your population. Normally when we think of populations, they're huge. And so we think of taking these small samples from a giant population. This concept can be made a little smaller, and that's what this example is going to show us. So in this example, we just have a tutoring service that only runs for three days. Maybe they pop in right before final exams and they just help people who need help. And they record the number of calls that they receive on each of those three days. So on day one, they got 12 calls. Day two, they got 10 calls. Day three, they got five calls. This is the entire population of possible calls that that service got. So even though it's a tiny population, it's their entire population. Now, the next thing says, assume that samples of size two are randomly selected with replacement from this population, from these three values. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna grab any two values from this population and we're gonna list all the possible size two samples we can grab. So you can almost think of this as like a bag of numbers that always replenishes itself. Imagine inside of a bag, you have the number 12, the number 10, and the number five, and you reach into the bag and you grab any two numbers randomly. That's a sample of size two. And it's random, you're just grabbing in and grabbing two numbers. Actually, I should probably say you're not grabbing both at the same time because that would imply that you can't choose the same number twice. So you are going to grab two numbers, but you're going to grab one number, put it aside, and then the bag always has the same three numbers in it. Even if you see one and write it down, you put it back in, and then you grab another number, you see it, you write it down, and you put it back in. So your bag of numbers, your population never changes. And that makes sense because we know our population is always these three values. So one possibility is we can grab two 12s. We can reach in and look at the number. If it's a 12, we write down 12 and we put it back in the bag. We can reach in again and grab our second number. It can still be another 12. So one possibility of getting a sample of size two from this population is we can get two 12s. With that same idea in mind, these are all nine possible things that we can get. All nine possible samples of size two with replacement from this population of size three. So I can get two 12s, I could get a 12 and a 10, I could get a 12 and a five. I could get a 10 and a 12, a 10 and a 10, or a 10 and a five, and so on. There's only nine possibilities. After that, they'll be repeated. So that's my first step is, what are all the possible samples of size two that I can make using these three numbers? And I'm gonna list them all here, and that's what I've done. I've also listed them again here. Here's my two 12s, here's my 12 and my 10, here's my 12 and my five. So this is just a repeat. And I did this because I next want to find the mean of each of my little tiny samples. 
Remember, to calculate the mean or the average, you simply add all the values together in each sample and divide by the number of values. So 12 and 12 is 24, divided by 2 is 12. So the average or the mean of this tiny mini sample, my first possible sample, is 12. The average of my second sample is 11. The average of my third possible sample is 8.5, and so on and so forth. So I calculate the average of each of my individual samples. And so that's what these numbers here represent. They're the average of each of my samples. Now, this seems a little weird because my samples are so tiny. But again, remember, if I had an enormous population and I grab little samples of size 20 out of it, it wouldn't be so weird to take the average of each of those individual samples. That's all I'm doing here is just taking the average of each of my samples. It just so happens that my samples are very little. All right, now what are we going to do with these averages? Let's find out. Our next step, because we're creating a distribution of our samples, a distribution is the probability of getting any given value. So I actually, in my next step, want to try to figure out, now that I know all of the averages of each of my samples, what's the probability of getting each of these averages? In other words, looking at all these possible averages, what's my probability of coming up with an average of 12? Well, there's only one 12, and there's nine different possible averages I can get. So my probability of getting a 12 as my average is 1 out of 9. Okay, good. So I'm going to write that down. What's my probability of getting an 11 as an average? Well, I can get an 11 this way, and I can get one this way. So I actually have two different ways of getting an 11 as my average out of all nine possibilities. So the probability of an 11 being my average is actually 2 out of 9. My probability of getting a 10 is only 1 out of 9, because there's only one of them. My probability of getting an 8.5 is actually 2 out of 9, because I've got two of those. My probability of getting a 7.5 is also 2 out of 9, because I've got two of those. And my probability of getting a 5 is 1 out of 9, because I've only got one of those. So what I've calculated here are the probabilities of getting each one of these possible averages from my samples. So again, I found all possible samples, I found the average of each sample, and then I found the probability of getting all possible averages. What am I going to do with this? I can use that information to calculate the actual mean of my sampling distribution. So these values give me my sampling distribution. They give me the probability of each possible average of my samples. So my samples can average to 12, or they can average to 11, or they can average to 10, or so on. And this is the probability of getting any one of those averages. I can use these probabilities then to find the mean of my sampling distribution which is calculated using this formula. This formula tells you I want to take the sum of all of these products. In other words, I want to add together all of these products. Well, how do I create these products? This x, for example, represents the value here, like 12. The probability of x, in this case, is 1 ninth. So my first product is 12 times 1 ninth. That's the x value and the probability of getting it. My second x times probability of x comes from the second value. My x is 11 in this case. My probability of getting 11 is 2 over 9. So that's 11 times 2 over 9. Similarly, my probability of getting a 10 is 1 ninth. So that's 10 times 1 ninth. My probability of getting an 8.5 is 2 ninths, so that's 8.5 times 2 ninths. My probability of getting a 7.5 is also 2 ninths, 7.5 times 2 ninths. And finally, my probability of getting a 5 is 1 over 9, 5 times 1 over 9. 
In order to solve this, I multiply each product together first to get the answer there, and then I add those all together. And when I do that, I get the result of 9. 9 is the mean of my sampling distribution. It's the average of my averages. These are all the averages of my samples, and the average of all of my averages is 9. Now, the final cool thing about this is if I go back to my original population, which is just 12, 10, and 5, and I take the mean or the average of that original population by adding them together and dividing by 3, it's also 9. And this also shows that the mean of a sampling distribution is the same as the mean of the original population. So this was a full out example of how to take a small population, in this case 12, 10, and 5, create all the possible samples of size 2 that can be derived from that population, find the average of each of my individual samples, then find the probability that each of these averages will occur, and then finally I can use those probabilities to find the mean of my sampling distribution using this formula. All right, well that concludes part two, and I'm going to go ahead and start on part three with some more examples. Thanks for joining me so far.